Do you feel like your build might be a little doo-doo and not the best? Or are you an absolute chad with a godlike build, but you're just bored twiddling your thumbs waiting for DLC to drop? Well, if you resemble either of those, then this video is for you, because here we have the top 8 most fun, unique, challenging, weird, cool, awesome, broken, and insane builds in Elden Ring. Yes sir, let's do this thing. But before we dive headfirst into these builds, just know that my channel here supports Project Orochi, the legendary clothing brand. Brand. A link to their website is down below. If you had a choice between unleashing giant red lightning strikes, incinerating your enemies to a crisp, or going outside to touch grass, which would you rather do? If you chose grass, then get out. It's time to leave. It's time to go. Get the fuck out right now. Go. Get out of here. Scram. But if you chose the giant lightning god option, then this build is for you. A dexterity faith build executing lightning attacks for massive damage, wielding a keen Nagakiba pimped out with the Vikes Dragon Bolt Enhancement. Yes sir, your father will be proud to see you looking like this. For an Ash of War on the Nagakiba, got Spinning Slash or Double Slash. See, Double Slash is the sprinter with faster strikes, while Spinning Slash is the heavyweight, dealing powerful poise damage, likely staggering the enemy. Highly effective here, considering the Nagakiba has such a long reach, man. I mean, it's just so, so long and pointy and, and hard. That's what she said. <laughs> Using the Gravel Stone Seal to cast Dragon Cult Incantations, Lightning Speed Spear, Honed Bolt, Lanceax Glaive, and the big daddy of all incantations, the Ancient Dragon's Lightning Strike. This is the spell that you charge up to full power to unleash maximum damage and feel good about yourself because you're strong. You're a strong man. Hold up, oh, hold on a second. Just look at yourself. What are you wearing right now? A plain t-shirt, sweatpants, or, or basketball shorts? Oh my god. Stop it, get some help. Well luckily for you, today I can give you a discount from the legendary clothing brand Project Orochi. The link is down below. Orochi specializes in streetwear clothing, inspired by Japanese mythology and art. Beautiful scenery, badass samurai, or little Kirin. In the video game section, we have designs inspired by Apex Legends, For Honor, and Dark Souls, baby! Let's go! Look at this! Lucaria Academy? Okay, noise. Custom art Queen Merica? Beautiful. A rotted out knight? In collaboration with that big YouTuber guy? My god. I need this. They even have an ashes t-shirt with all these spirit ashes lined up. Like, man, how cool is that? And the quality of the material is A1. I myself previously bought the Cyber Orochi from For Honor, so I can honestly tell you, the material feels top tier. Solid, yet soft. I mean, 50 bucks for an awesome hoodie that's gonna last you a lifetime is a damn good deal. Oh, wait, hold up. These socks are only $3? Holy shit, I'm about to get these. Do your yourself a favor and level up your appearance. Visit projectorochi.com slash Elden King. And then when you check out, use my discount code Elden King for a 10% off sale. The link is down below. Did I mention they have free shipping within North America? So please go visit the Orochi website using my link below. Thank you fellas and thank you to Project Orochi. What have I done? For the talismans, Flox Canvas Talisman. Second, Shard of Alexander, of course, of course. Thirdly, Godfrey's Icon, because most of these lightning spells can be charged up. And finally, the Lightning Scorpion Charm, because we want to buff lightning damage any way we can. So of course, we use the Lightning Shrouding tier as well. For your stats, your main priority here is hitting the soft caps for both dexterity and faith. Over the years, I've witnessed many attempts to create a Guts build from Berserk, but they often leave out a couple key elements, so today I shall craft the greatest Guts build that any weeb has ever seen. Oh, that's bars. Step 1, the Greatsword. It seems a bloody Greatsword fits the build quite nicely, with Barbaric Roar, mostly chosen because he screams in anger. <gasps> which correlates well with the obvious anger management problems that Guts has as a character. The use of Blood Affinity on this weapon elevates it to being one of the most deadly and dare I say cheesiest weapons in the game. 
Step 2. We need a good crossbow. In my experience, crossbows in Elden Ring are dog water. Doo doo trash. I'm talking shit from an ass. Oh, more bars. There is one exception to the pile of garbage that is crossbows. Behold, the pulley crossbow. It's got a pew pew triple shot, which proves to be especially effective when paired with status effects. While I know it's a pain in the ball sack to farm and craft blood or frost bolts, the payoff is totally worth it. Because being able to proc bleed or frost from a far distance like this just feels like you're cheating, man. I mean, it feels like cheat codes, baby, because of how effective it is. And finally, we integrate fire pots to emulate the fire cannon that Guts wields in his arm. Now, I'll admit, it's not a perfect replica, but hey, it's close enough, all right? I mean, it's the best I could do. Cut me some slack, man. Get off my, get off my and back about it, man. Oh, okay, let me get off of that thing. For talismans, we got the Roar Medallion to increase the damage buff of the Barbaric War weapon art. Axe Talisman to buff your charged heavy attack combo, Lord of Blood Exaltation. And lastly, Great Jar Arsenal or Urchery Favor to help with the weight load. Our stat priorities are Strength and Arcane. But because the greatsword is so heavy, we need a bit of endurance as well. Ever since a little boy tarnished, even before speaking my first words, yeah. I dreamt of wielding a flail in Elden Ring. The satisfaction from that spectacular swirly of death. So today, I shall finally make that dream a reality. A strength intelligence build that I call the Frosty Bloody Spinneruski. The Chain Link Flail is probably the best flail in the game. It's got great scaling for the cold affinity. Combined with the innate blood loss it already inflicts, we are now proccing both the bleed and frost on enemies. And as my fat ugly f of an 8th grade science teacher would say, that's a double whammy kids. I realized that Wild Strikes or Stormcaller is the way to go here. Both will stagger enemies and give you hyper armor. Even without a high poise, I am tanking through attacks, procking frost, and boom, they did. I got myself a nice medium shield to go with the flail. Great opportunities for guard counters. Now you can use whatever shield you want, really, but I'm using the turtle shield because... Turtle turtle? I like its stamina regeneration boost, plus it fits the wild barbarian animalistic vibe that I'm going for with this build. The first talisman we want to use is Shard of Alexander, of course, of course, Lord of Blood's Exaltation for the blood loss, and then Erdtree Favor for the final spot, Curved Sword Talisman to buff those guard counters, or you can use Rotten Winged Insignia to buff successive attacks, because you will stack consecutive hits with the Wild Strikes and Stormcaller weapon arts, so choose whatever best fits your playstyle. That being said, you can use the Thorny Crack tier in your drink as well. Now you want to focus on your strength level, then throw the rest into intelligence for a bit more attack power with the cold affinity. Some of y'all been asking for a pure incantation casting build. So here we have the Iron Madman. Any and all unique flame spells can be used here. So Black Flame, Blood Flame, or Frenzy Flame. Got Flame of Frenzy as your primary attack for general purposes. Black Flame is great for single targets like bosses. Then Frenzied Burst is your long range sniper. Hey, Bob, it's a nice day outside today, isn't it? Yeah, Tommy. You know, I really miss my wife and kids on days like these. <laughs> this build really only works if you have a high faith level, like 70 to 80. With such a high faith, the Erd Tree Seal has the strongest scaling compared to everything else. So, it'd be most effective to double up on seals. Cast with the Erd Tree while holding the Frenzy Flame Seal in your other hand, simply to gain that damage boost or when you go to use Black Flame spells, swap in the God Slayer Seal to get its damage boost to Black Flame. If you're feeling bold and beautiful and you want to get it real spicy, you can use the good old Iron Man strategy. Using Iron Jar Aromatic to get yourself rock hard, drink the Cerulean Hidden Tear for unlimited FP, then blast away with unendurable frenzy. Have yourself a grand old time. Now, just to make sure we have at least one melee weapon, I do have the Coded Sword. With such a high faith level, this weapon is deadly, and it fits the Iron Man theme for this build.
The first talisman, we got the Flox Canvas Talisman. Secondly, Godfrey's Icon, because many of these spells can be charged up. And then I never leave home without the Radagon Icon on a purely casting build. And lastly, the Fire Scorpion Charm, because fire damage is important here. Now we want to dive head first into our faith level here. Then sprinkle around the rest of your stats into vigor, mind, whatever. Here we have a strength and arcane build. The Granddaddy Molly Whopper. Dual occult great stars, both with the Crag Blade Ash of War. This setup does one thing and one thing only. Bombastic jump attacks. The you could use a weapon art like Stormcaller on your main hand. Whipping around that big ol' hammer can really do some damage. This is good for spanking down bosses, as well as fending off mobs of Weenie Hut Juniors. But dude, double crag blade on both hammers just gives you the giant molly wops and can easily break enemy stance. You jump up and slam down two big bunks until they fall to their knees. Then stab them in the heart like my ex-wife did to me. Claw Talisman to buff our jump attacks, Lord of Blood Exaltation for the bleed, Great Jar Arsenal or Urtree Favor to help with the heavy weight load, and lastly, you can equip Shard of Alexander if you're using Stormcaller, but don't use it if you got the double crag blade instead. Our priority is Arcane, we want 80 Arcane for maximum attack power from the Occult Affinity, and then the rest goes into Strength. By the way, shout out to Big Man Dinkle Dick for helping me optimize this build even further. So if you've made it this far, kindly give this video a like. And don't just gently tap it. No, I want to see a full-on fucking body slam on that like button, baby. And now comment below your favorite builds. What build are you currently using? Or any thoughts and opinions on my builds here. I really appreciate all your guys' comments and support. A strength intelligence build. Introducing the Gravity Samurai. A cosmic warrior channeling the universe's power to cast gravity spells while wielding the meteoric blade, which is not only strong, but it looks cool too. I mean, this katana is for those of us who actually touch grass every once in a while. The weapon art, Gravitas, can teach those pesky, happy, flappy, airborne f***ers a lesson about flapping around in our sky. It deals low damage, but its large area of effect makes it perfect for mobs of schmucks, though much less effective on single targets. But do not fret, my pimple-faced friend, because this build can still spank bosses using sorceries. Spells like Collapsing Stars and Rock Sling really shine against single targets. For this build, I recommend using these gravity spells, plus Ronnie's Dark Moon. Not only because it's a moon, a, a celestial body, but also because the Dark Moon perfectly complements the role we need it for. Procking Frost, debuffing, and dealing damage on a single target. Once you're past level 60 intelligence, the Regal Scepter is stronger than the Meteorite Staff. So the optimal setup here involves dual wielding both staves, casting with the Regal Scepter while keeping the Meteorite Staff in your other hand to enjoy that juicy 30% increased damage to gravity spells. You definitely will want to use the Magic Shrouding tier, but I also like using the Cerulean Hidden tier to give me unlimited FP, because what I like to do is drink the flask, then just go crazy casting spells like Dark Moon and Meteorite of Estelle, raining down my wrath upon the earth, destroying everyone. It's like a dang magic show, but instead of pulling rabbits out of hats or cutting bitches in half, Man, I'm dead. you're pulling high damage meteors out of the sky. Our first talisman, Shard of Alexander, of course, of course. Then you want Graven Mass Talisman to buff sorceries, Ritual Sword Talisman, and then Erdtree Favor. As you can probably tell, I really like Erdtree Favor for most builds. Now the stats on this build are tricky. Intelligence is your first priority here, so have at least 70 intelligence. And then from there, increase your strength as best you can, because the Meteoric Blade scales with strength. Here we have a good old strength bunk build. With this, we use a combat strategy only known to the greatest of players. You charge at your enemy, unleashing a battle cry like a psycho Native American, oh, yeah, 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 yeah! slamming your axe into their fragile skull. The Iron Cleaver has a unique heavy charged attack. It's all about buffing up this heavy strike for maximum damage. Ideal for one-shotting scrubs in PvP. Very satisfying stuff. 
we have a Fire Affinity Iron Cleaver with Royal Knight's Resolve. The Fire Affinity is worth using because fire type damage is so easily buffed. I mean, you got the Fire Scorpion Charm, you got Flame Grammy Strength, and Flame Shrouding Cracked here in my flask. So yeah, with the right strategy, Fire Affinity can yield the highest attack power. This deals major poise damage also, shattering enemy stance, leaving them vulnerable to critical strikes. Therefore, keep a Misery Core Dagger on standby, solely to execute the critical strikes. It's the cherry on top for this bone-crushing strategy. And by the way, even though the running charged heavy is the star of the show, don't forget the Iron Cleaver got a mean light attack spam. I'm talking serious spam power. You turn this into a goddamn whack-a-mole game. Axe Talisman to buff the heavy charged attack. Fire Scorpion Charm for even more fire damage. Dagger Talisman to buff critical strikes. And Earth Tree Favor to help with the weight load from wearing heavy armor. As you definitely want a strong defense and high poise so that we can tank through attacks. For stats, we got 69 strength, specifically 69, because Giggity. 25 faith. So you're able to use the Flame Grant Me Strength and Golden Vow buffs. Presenting a Pyro Strength build. Powerful Pyro attacks with a robust defense. Our main weapon is the Magma Worm Scale Sword, paired with the fashionable One-Eyed Shield. In close combat, you can switch to a two-handed grip on the Magma Scale Sword, unleashing the Magma Guillotine. What's awesome with this weapon art is the Hyper Armor. Once you get airborne, it's game over. They can't stop you from exploding your steamy hot load all over them. <laughs> On the other hand, the One-Eyed Shield's weapon art transforms into a bazooka blast, obliterating enemies from a distance. <laughs> the ultimate combination of close and long-range pyro attacks, making you a walking firework display. I got the Curved Sword Talisman for increased guard counter damage, because with this sword you can straight mollywop enemies using guard counters. It just feels good. Shard of Alexander, of course. Next, got the Green Turtle Talisman. And finally, Great Jar Arsenal to help with the weight load. This is a very stat-hungry build. You want to prioritize strength first, but you also need a strong faith level too. Plus, because of how heavy your weight load is, this build requires a solid endurance. Now be sure to check out Project Orochi and level up your wardrobe a little bit. Come on, man, treat yourself to actual quality clothing. And if you want to engage with the community here, come check out our growing Discord. Connect with other players, talk about builds, all of that. The links for everything are in the description. Thank you for watching, my friends. I appreciate y'all.